so awkward. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm going to It's just me. Good morning, Alive Church. We are so excited that you're here with us this morning, this cold, frigid Valentine's Day. Thank you for braving the weather to be here with us today. Why don't you stand up, say good morning to somebody around you, and join us in our first worship song. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. To me, like we this is a canvas for a street. My story isn't over, cause my story's just begun. Fail you want to find me, cause that's what my father does. Fail you want to find me, cause that's what my father does. Good morning, Alive Church. Hi, some of you don't know, my name is Nikki. If you haven't seen me around, 
I'm here. Um, <laughs> um, I just want to give a few announcements this morning. Um, so last week was the reboot of the Kids Cafe and um, the Kids Zone, and it was actually really good last week. They were, it came off really well. The kids had a really great, great time. And we just want to thank um, Lori, Lorelai, and Jessica for heading that up and making it the success that it was. So today after Joe's Kids Spot, um, we just want to let you guys send your kids out to go enjoy the festivities out in the hallway for the Kids Cafe again today. Um, we're also going to be having intercessory prayer and training worship. Um, that will be held on February 27th from 5 to 6, so that will be the training. And then afterwards, they're going to have prayer from 7 to 6 to 7, and that will be headed up by Dean Eddy. And she'll just be kind of going over different things on prayer and how to make our prayer life a little better than what it already is. Or if it's non-existent, make it existent. And we are, have an app that we're launching, the Church Center. So if you can go on your phones and download the app, and that way you can have better ways to communicate with the church on things that you need and want or desire from us, as well as vice versa. So... I think that's it. Thank you for listening to me today. That's right. Oh, okay. That's okay. So now we're going to be doing a game. So for this game, I need two couples. Thank you, Tony and Sin, for volunteering. Thank you so much. Ever so gracious. The Connors. We're going to bring you up as well. This is going to be newlywed game and for this game we have some props for you all here's yours Rob <laughs> no you should not have stayed home all right pick a marker so as you guys know this is well we're not drawing we're writing don't so as you guys might know this is a game where we test if you truly know your spouse and if you can live with the fact that you might not know them as well as you think you do. So, we're going to start with our first questions for our contestants. And how this is going to work is you are going to write down your answer without showing your spouse. And then, on the count of three, you guys will reveal your answers. And if they match, you get a point. And then the same with you as well. So, let's go to our first question. How long have you been together? Tricky. And God's watching, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. It's 2021. Are you doing math, Tony? Yes, I am. Okay, carry the one. <laughs> okay, do we have our answers? Okay. One, two, three. Let's see. They match 46, 46, 20, and 20. Wow. Good first step. That was an easy one, yes. That was, that was just to make sure you're in the game. Yeah, you might want to sit down if you had gotten that one wrong. We'd pick a new one. So next question will be, who gives the best gifts between the two of you? <laughs> okay. Ready? Does everybody have their answers? Okay, three, two, one. Reveal the answers. What do we have? She does. Rob, eh, you do not agree. What do you have? Tony and Tony. One more point for the Pickens family. What woman wouldn't want a new hot water heater for her birthday? What woman wouldn't want a new hot water heater for her birthday? I don't. <laughs> You're lucky, You're a lucky woman. Okay, next question. Who is a better morning person? Now, I think this question can go two ways because more awake sometimes is not better. Sometimes that's worse. So do what so if you're not the morning person. So does everybody have their answers? Okay, three, two, one. Ooh, yes, you guys agreed. And yes, we have another agreement. Very good. This is a good sign. 
This is very good. Next. Which of you is the funniest? This could cause some tension, but it's okay. I know some marriage counselors we have you talk to after this if need be. Okay, ready? Okay, three, two, one. Let's see. Did she agree? Yes. And you agree too. Perfect. Okay. You guys know each other very well. This is good. Okay. And I think we have one more, correct? Yes, we have one more. Who is the better cook? <laughs> this does not mean who cooks most often. This means who's the better. Because that, those are different. Okay, ready? One, two, three. We've got Jackie and Jackie. Good. Sin and sin. Great. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for playing in the spirit of Valentine's Day today. We are going to continue with our service. Thanks for playing, guys. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pray for our offering and for our worship time today. So Lord, um, we just welcome you into this space this morning. We just thank you for the fun we're able to have, the way we're able to come together and experience your love. Um, and, and we just want to uh, surrender our hearts, surrender um, ourselves to you this morning, um, just give you all of it, just be... Um, be ready to to give whatever it is you're asking us to um, in whatever area of our life that looks like. Um, and as we're worshiping this morning, we just pray that you would just speak to us through your word in this time. So we're just we're just so grateful that we're we're able to do this together. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Philippians 2 says that Jesus became humble by giving his life for all humanity, for us. And he put us before himself by willingly giving up his life that way. Um, it says he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. That he put everything, all others before himself. Um, so it's the nature of becoming a servant that we're called to follow that example and to show that, to demonstrate that in our lives. And as we do that and put others before ourselves, lift others up, we're building the kingdom of God and we're seeing it happen right in front of us. Um, so the foundation that we're building the kingdom of God on is the servant nature of Jesus as we take that into our own hearts and start living that out. So in this next song, um, we just wanna we just wanna claim that as our foundation that we're building our lives on.
you so much for the promise of your love, the covenant of your love. We just thank you for the comfort that you've given us in knowing that you are our perfect father and you are our one love and you will protect us and provide for us and we just love you and honor you for that and we just pray that we can show others that same love the true love of Christ thank you so much for saying that we love because you first loved us thank you for giving us such a good example of what that means and even though we can never fully comprehend it thank you for letting us see examples of your love in the Bible in our lives and thank you for speaking to our hearts and helping us feel that love for others. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to check out this sweet kid spot. Friends, welcome. So good to see you. A little cold out there, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> welcome to today. My name's Joe. I... We're in the book of Ephesians. In fact, we're in Ephesians 6, and it says something like this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your mother and father, which is the first command with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. Right? Awesome promise from God's word. But you know, there's that one word in there that just kind of gets us a little like, woo-hoo, and that is the word. A lot of times it sounds like this when we hear that word. Oh, man. Ah, ah. But I'm telling you, it doesn't have to look like that. And let me just, just bear with me a few minutes because there's another word that sounds just like that, and that's this word. Stop! Stop that! Stop doing that! <laughs> right? I mean, we've heard it all, right? But now listen, though. If you read the rules of the road and get your driver's license, you got no problem with stop, right? I mean, you know that you come up to a stop sign, you're like, I am so stopping, because you know that there's a reason, there's a really good reason you got to stop, right? And if so... It's the same with this word obey. When you read God's word, I mean, read, the, read a lot of it, and you come up to this, you're like, of course I'm going to obey my parents. I love my parents. I want to be a helper. I want to help them and do things and be a part of this family. This is great. You know, it's not this like, Ugh, word. It's this like, yes, yes, of course, word, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> listen, friends. Uh, we're going to break out. We're going to go hang out, play some games, do some things. And so, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Out to the Kids Spot Cafe for some fun and some obedience. Some obedience classes, you could call it, almost like this morning. Um, yeah, as they're heading out, uh, cool thing, I found this on our refrigerator at home this week. It was this sign that we made two years ago during what we affectionately call the GFC, the Gam uh, Girton Family Campout. And I've talked about that quite a bit. That's when my in-laws come to our house for a week and they camp out in the backyard. We've been doing it 11 years now and we do like a kind of a post-breakfast family huddle and gathering where we set the stage for each day and kind of each week we do it we have a theme of the week and we um, do like a devotion and we get in God's word or have like a theme verse that we're focused on for the whole work or for the whole week and then do different challenges and I, I was like surprised that I found that on our refrigerator this week because it was our homework last week it was our homework last week to take this exact same passage, Deuteronomy 6, and put it on something that would be in your home, whether it's the refrigerator or your door or a bathroom mirror so that you see this regularly. And I, was, I asked Andrea, I was like, did we do this last year? And I was kind of thinking, because if it's still on our fridge, it was this last summer we did it. She's like, actually, that was from two summers ago. And the, uh, the last day of the 
camp out was the challenge was every family make one of these and if you flip it over we all signed one another's so like every member of the family cousins uncles grandparents parents we all signed one another's because we were committing to another year of living like this and at the heart of this insta fam series that we're doing the reality is family does not happen in an instant when it comes to building it god's way if we want to really see the fruit and the best of and the, the greatest affection of God in our lives and how that's supposed to overflow in the family setting from husbands and wives to parents and like we focused on last week, that it would be a generational thing, that it's, it's just so important to keep that in front of us. And that generational thinking that we talked about last week is like front and center of that. To have those kind of interactions and technically this would be Emily's artwork. She championed it for our family and drawing this picture of it and writing the verse. The verse says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down, when you get up. Tie them as symbols to your hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses, on your gates, and put them even on your refrigerator. So that two years from the day you wrote it, you would remember it, and it would rekindle all this best stuff about family. It got me to thinking of actually Emily Champion signing or making that sign for us as a family, but it, uh, her whole bedroom is basically like this. So she's 17. Of course, I asked her for permission to take pictures of her room, but her room is, is like built off of this same concept of writing down like really important things that all point to like this greatest commandment or these basic, most um, essential teachings of God's word and our life and our family values. That uh, this one, um, one of her quotes that she has up there, every day you have the power to choose. She looks at that every day. She's reminded about that truth that today, the greatest thing probably determined in her day will be her choices. She's got the ability to choose light or dark. And she chooses light like crazy all the time. Uh, this one, uh, nevertheless, she persisted. Try being a young lady in this world and trying to grow up and be who and how God has called you to be. Think of everything that comes against that, that just having this mindset of persisting. Nevertheless, no matter what, no matter what, persistence to who and how God made you to be. I love this one. She talked to God daily, and that is what made her lovely. That's in my daughter's bedroom. Happy dad. Happy dad that's in her heart, that's in her mind, it's on her walls. That is wonderful. This other uh, more classic many phrases, big, uh, dream big. Use kind words. Say, I love you. Laugh. Giggle. Be silly. Share. Say please and thank you. Keep your promises. Be grateful. Help others. And don't whine. It's not the same of you help others and whine. Don't whine. Take moments to breathe. Try new things. Keep calm and carry on. And laugh out loud. That's so biblically reminding us about who and how God is and what life is supposed to be. Keeping that in front of our eyes is so important. Love this one. Instead of letting your hardships and your failures discourage or exhaust you, let them make you even hungrier, more hungry for success and to succeed in your life. And then there's this one, just to show how keeping it real. There's the Jonas Brothers. That also <laughs> exists in her bedroom. And is, um, just shows that you know, there's still work to be done. Um, but she loves that. And then this one, just because it goes with the theme, and I got to get Frank Grice back, because he taunted me this week, and you don't taunt me. Do not taunt me. I am the pastor, and I will win. <laughs> Check out this picture of Frank and Helen and little Polly in their pool. How dare he sends that to me in the middle of this week when we're all freezing. So hi, Frank. Everyone's seeing your picture of you in the pool. But what's cool about that, what they're actually doing ties so much in because they're down there on an intergenerational time away. We talk about daily diverting, weekly withdrawing, monthly getting away, and annually retreating. 
Let's be praying for the Grices. Oh, that's hard to say. <laughs> that is hard to say with it being, it's probably, it started out negative two this morning. By noon, it's supposed to be three degrees. So right now, it's probably like one. And they're down there doing that, but pray for them because that's what they're doing. You got grandson, grandkid, parents, grandparents doing life, living out that biblical pattern. And that's what this is all about. This does not happen in a minute. It takes all kinds of intentionality. And Emily, is that bedroom is a result of 17 years of being poured into by Andrea and I. Somewhat that I think has helped, but grandparents and aunts and uncles and other cousins and repeated patterns and practices that really make up the heart of this series and really what we're diving into. Building family God's way in today's world does not happen in an instant. We live in a fast-paced, on-demand, instant gratification kind of driven world. If we can't have something now or in a minute or on Amazon Prime, at least next day delivery, we usually will settle for something else. And I don't know why we do this. This is our human brokenness. But we're so ready and willing to settle for something less when we know what is right and when we know what is good. And we know what, uh, like Joe said, it's a, this call of God in our lives is positive. Why would we ever settle for life less than what God has intended? And it's because we're driven for this instant world, and that's not the way it happens. Only through generational thinking, Christ-like submission, wealth built for the long haul, and celebrations that are passed on from generation to generation do we actually find family built God's way. Last week, our verse out of Deuteronomy was these commands, decrees, and laws. The Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. He gave us those so that you and your children and their children after them may fear God, may know him and who he is and what he is like, as long as you live by keeping this way of life that he calls you to lead. All these decrees and all these commands that, you know, I give you so that you may enjoy, again, another so that, that it's, this is for us. It's got the best of intention. It's got the best reward in the end if we adhere to it. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord the God of your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents is that picture in God's mind has promised you. So the hope of this series is that we would gain a wider, longer, deeper, higher perspective on family and what we're really shooting for. Raise the bar. Don't, don't lower it. How can we skate by and you know, just kind of skim along and maybe feel what we're supposed to feel and have but why not raise the bar and make it high? This week, the subtitle is this Christ-like submission. Last week, generational thinking, but then this Christ-like submission. Family built God's way only happens through Christ-like submission taken on by every member of the household. That has to be what is driving it. Ephesians chapter 5 is the heart of where most people think when the, of the Christian household and how it's supposed to go. And the heading of it is instructions for Christian households. That's good. That's something that should draw our attention to there. The parallel, I call it kind of the Cliff Notes version, is in Colossians. It says the exact same thing with a little less detail. But it's also subtitled... Um, Instructions for Christian households. And the Ephesian passage starts out like this. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's a call to the household. That's a call to the parents. That's a call to the children. That's a call to the wives. That's a call to the husbands. Is submit to one another out of this reverence for Christ. Knowing who and how he is like. That's what drives us to do this. It's not a picture of that it will just get us the marriage that we want or it will just get us the household. It's all in this view and this understanding, this like reverence for Christ, this deeper understanding and love and affection for who he is and what he is like. That, that would be what, what drives us into the, in this picture 
of each of us taking on that kind of role. Just like it says in verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's the only way you're going to find what you're after. Colossians then puts it like this. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. I like how Ephesians 6 fleshes out the parent and child dynamic a little bit more. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with that promise. It's number six. Uh, number five on the ten, ten Commandments is that first one that uh, there's a so that that goes with it. Honor them so that it will go well with you and that you will enjoy and live just an incredible life that you probably haven't even imagined. And then again it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. And that's all under this blanket of us submitting to one another. And our picture of that has to be Christ and his submission to the Father and to the Father's will and wanting what is right and laying his life down, that Jesus is really that context that is our, our plumb line in doing this. Wives, you know, essentially it's this. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Children, obey your parents. And fathers, do not embitter your children. I think this is how that's kind of played out in the Struckmeyer household. I was thinking tons about that um, this week and it really in this series and this season of my life and where my family's at and what stage we're in. It, your family never needs less of you in it. It's just always different. Right? You've heard that about parenting. You never are less of a parent. You need to be as much a parent. And most parents would say, and more as it goes on, but it's different. And that's the challenge. Different doesn't mean bail. Different, different doesn't mean step away. Different means engage more. You've got to use bigger imagination of what's meaningful and important and how, and how do you transfer this, this love of God and this following of him in your life and living. How, how do you do that now when you get phone calls to transmit? No more car time. That, my, I had some mentoring uh, peer friends that were, their kids were ahead of me, and they were saying, you will miss car time. You, you, there will be a void in your life, and you will try to figure out what it was, but all that time you were complaining about dropping your kids off everywhere, that's your talk time. When that's gone, it's gone. Unless you're not creative, or in, in, unless you're creative to think of new ways to connect and stay you know, in it with them. But I think this is how th these verses look and how they play out in the Struckmeyer family. Wives, submit to your husbands. Here's the deal. And like I've learned this from her. It is true in the Bible, but I have learned what this looks like from Andrea. Andrea put helping me become who and how God made me to be at the center of her life. She submitted her whole life to me when she married me. And she submitted her whole life to me so that she could help me be who and how God has made me to be. And she has given up so much for that to happen. I don't always think submission gets framed like that. It's become something abusive and power and headship and this kind of stuff that, no, it's it's clear, if Jesus is the example, that's what it looks like, a life being laid down for someone's to come up, and it's full submission of an entire life for another. So our response would be, wives, you've got to do that. You have to do that. Submit your life to helping your husband become everything God made him to be. He can't do it without you. You have to submit your entire life to that. That ha that's the only way it plays out in God's way. That's his direction. That's his road sign that has to be followed. Husbands, love your wives. 
This is what I did. I put helping Andrea become who and how God made her to be at the center of my life. I gave up my life for her. I, you, that's what love is. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down their life for another. Christ is the example in Ephesians that they break down, and he did it like to death was how much he gave in to God's will and fully submitted to God's will to the point of death. Like, life lost. No self. There is not self anymore. There is you, and there is like one. Husbands, then, love your wives by laying your life down to help her become everything God made her to be. She can't do it without you. Give your life up for hers. That's the, that's the picture painted. We've got to see that. I always think of Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, right? What he had to do so that Mary could birth Christ into the world. What an example of a husband, in the sense, to let Jesus. And I hang out with too many other church planters and pastors that unfortunately are mostly male, and we get into these male complexes, and we think it's our job to bring Jesus to the world, and that, that's our job, and our spouses, you know, just help that happen through our lives, versus like, what about Joseph Mary? Like, Mary... Christ born in our, our, our wives' lives, right? What, that's, that's biblical. That's what we should be shooting for. Husbands love our wives like that. I love this. Children then, honor your parents. Drew, Nick, and Emily, made, and this is like grace of God, power of God, generational effect kind of stuff, but Drew, Nick, and Emily made loving God, following Jesus, and finding their purpose, passion, and gifts at the center of their lives, they, they made that everything because that was what we trained them. That's what Andrea and I trained them and like that's how, because that's how you know God. That's how you know his commands, his decrees, his love. That's how you live the life he calls you to. You love him, you follow Jesus, and you, f you figure out what is he purposed and gifted and passioned you for, and you give your whole life to that. And that's obedience. That's honoring your father and mother, living the life that they've trained you up to go. It is so good for you. It is so awesome. You, you won't believe it. You can't imagine it apart from doing it. Because we're broken until you start doing it. That's the by faith kind of peace that we all have to dive into this with. And that brings exceedingly abundant joy to every single day of a parent's life that a kid lives like that. And every single day and every even just moment that doesn't, there's tragedy in the human heart of a parent. Oh my word. You can't understand that till you are that. And man, is that true? And that's why God, I think that's why there's that promise like, that goes with doing this so that it goes well with you and for you and for long life and it's generational. And we always do that at the GFC, the Girton Family Camp Out. We, when we are in those huddles, it, it says it without words, but then we just want to be sure. So we use those words of like, we depend on each other. One of us going astray affects the whole of this story. This is a crazy story. Be selfless. Live, make hard choices for the rest of the group. Make our welfare better than your welfare. Put that as the better priority or, or what's more important and drives you to do what you think you need to do. It's crazy with the Nick Drew Emily thing. Last night, it was 8.30 here, 9.30 Michigan time. And there was like this crazy phone call rally thing that just happened. I tried to call Emily and... She didn't answer. Nick called me. I was talking to Nick. Nick had tried to call Andrea and Emily because they're together in Detroit for volleyball this weekend. Uh, Nick was actually with Drew, but why we couldn't get through to Andrea and Emily, they were actually talking to Drew. <laughs> so Nick and I wrapped up and he was going to call them. Yeah, he was going to call them and they text me that Nick's calling them, so then they'll call me after Nick. <laughs> right? 
and Nick and Drew, they were doing ninja together yesterday at uh, Grand Rapids Gymnastics where they do that. Drew hasn't done that in a while. Nick is really at the heart of ninjas on the move these days and leading that. But they really, that's, that's an organization slash nonprofit um, that Nick and Drew started together and run. And Emily and Andrea, they're at volleyball because of gifts and purpose and passion and family. And it was crazy. And we said this, like, entering this season that, um, how did we say it? Uh, I'm not going to be able to even remember. But it's like we're not far apart. We're just spread out. That's the, like, Jedi language I use sometimes to, like, help see this is that, no, this is good. We're doing it. We are doing it. My life is down for yours. Andrea's life is down for yours. Their lives are down for our, yours. And actually, I didn't close the loop with the Drew connection, but I had already talked to him for an hour on my drive here yesterday. And we got all caught up about all this stuff. We talked about every single one of the others in the conversation at like a, a hopeful uh, level of, you know, this kind of being this kind of family. So children, honor your parents by loving and following God. You will have days like that in the future if you, if you do. And that following God is like, that's what your parents are training you to do. That's whatever they're asking and why they want you to do. It, just have faith. It goes towards that kind of picture. So do it. Completely and immediately obey. And then this gets crazy. Um, th and this is just the Bible. So you make out of it, why, does, why do fathers get singled out and this kind of stuff? I don't know, but it does. Fathers, do not embitter your children. Well, what about moms? That's maybe my first reaction. Because this, this is it. I feel like this is true. Because like, within me lies devastating potential to ruin everything for generations to come. Dads, fathers, earthly fathers, made to reflect earth or heavenly fathers. Do not embitter your children within me. If they were to become embittered because of how I am. And I feel like there, there's some pretty clear ways that that happens in the family and the family structure. When dads don't love moms right, that embitters children. Because they know how moms are supposed to be treated. It's like in them. They came from them. This kind of thing, there's nothing worse to do to a kid than, and really this would be, they can recover. I've, I'm making this up, but I think it's, like they can recover from things that happen to them. But when you wreck their mom and you wreck what that picture is supposed to look like, how they recover from that in their life, I don't know. That seems, just in biblical order, that seems like something more devastating than something, you know, being inconsistent with them. That's why marriage is so important. That's why as parents, getting that right is so important. Fathers, you will embitter your children if you don't love your wife right. Your life down for hers. That, I'm just going from what it says. I wrote it this way. I will embitter and exasperate Drew, Nick, and Emily towards the things of God and that full life that they're called to, they're made for and created for. If I do not love Andrea well, and if I do not accurately model and train them in what it means to love God and follow Jesus and find your purpose and your passion and your gifts that God has given you to make this world a better place, to know him and make him known in this world, I will do that. It even said discouraged was the word. You will discourage them. You'll like take the courage out of them. They will not have that within them. They will not have the courage to go where God's calling them to go. Remember, that's a pretty big part of it with Joshua. Be bold and courageous. You're going to have to be, be able to be bold and you're going to have to be courageous to go. And fathers can't let that not be in their kids because of how they love their mom and then how consistent they are and presence and modeling who the Father God is in this world. So kids, do not embitter them by loving... Um, yeah, so fathers, do not embitter children by loving their mother poorly or inaccurately, reflecting who and what God is like to them. Because if you do that, that ruins everything for generations to come. So...
John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. The family, you, you mess the family up, you mess kind of all of it up, right? But Jesus, why he came and what he came for is that we would have life and that we would have it to the full. He's the one that makes this life possible. And it's always possible. And it can get broken and it can get damaged. And there are horrifying days at the Struckmeyer house. And there are horrifying moments in the Struckmeyer marriage and this kind of stuff. But Jesus, his intention, he came so that it could always be made new and made full, being that ultimate life that we keep shooting for. And when we submit to one another out of this reverence for Christ, this reverence for Christ means we know he came so that life would be lived to the full, and that's what we would want most for every member of our family except ourselves. And the good news about a biblically functioning family is then, if you're a family of five, there are four others desiring that for you. You don't need to worry about yourself. You worry about them. You lay your life down for them to love God, to follow Jesus and to find that purpose, passion, and calling that is on their life. That's how we win. We've used the phrase around our house, becoming the Struckmeyers God is calling us to be. That's like how we've, God just led us. We didn't know it at the time, but we started saying that. And when we moved from Battle Creek to Lowell, it was because we were just in pursuit of becoming the Struckmeyers God is calling us to be, which is driven by that picture of this loving God and following Jesus, but at the heart of that is this purpose, passion, and gifts God has given each of us in laying our lives down so that we collectively, the Struckmeyers, are more important than any one of us. That image and that picture for what God calls us to, but what does that look like? What purpose, passion, and gifts has God put in each of us to become all that he has made us to be? And let's live for one another for that to happen in one another's lives. So for us, what is the family God is calling you to be? How do you have those conversations with parents? No matter what age we are, unless they've passed on, we still have parents. This content is applicable. Talk to them in this way. Think about these kinds of things in this way. As a child, as a parent, as a grandparent, these are all fair game to think about what is the family God is calling us to be? What are we being built on? Like Ronald and Salem saying, what foundation is this all coming up off of? What is your part in helping your family become that? Which is kind of like what in you has to die so that they can live more free. And ultimately, that's just our challenge laid out today is, man, uh, to commit to building family God's way is to commit to this like Christ-like submission to one another so that the family can be what God has created it to be. So as Ronald and Salem come to close us, um, let's let this time just be a chance for God to speak to us about that. What needs to grow and change what needs to be laid down, what new dreams need to be talked about and put back at the center of what our families are about so that it can be built God's way. So, Father God, we thank you for your word that it's our map, it's our lifeblood of knowing you and who and what you're like and knowing ourselves and this world and how you designed and created it to be. Help us hear from you, from your word. Help us be better and quicker at putting self aside so that others are lifted up. Help us get better at speaking courage and value, um, esteem and purpose, having great conversations and getting better and imagining better ways to have better conversations and family time that's, again, this intergenerational thing or um, really is a, is a family deal. So uh, help us as a body 
be that for one another. Uh, you always in your word are talking uh, the church is a family. We are that for each other, that each of us would lay our lives down so that others in this body can become who and how you've made them to be. I would see relationships like that in this place help us build relationships that move into that kind of space where we love each other that much, that we help each other find purpose and calling and and be better husbands and wives and dads and moms and kids and siblings, brothers and sisters. So yeah, in this time, uh, speak to each of us and we just love you, we thank you and um, pray these things in Jesus' name, amen.
so much for your patience with us and your mercy and your compassion because you truly have unconditional love for us and we just want to run back to you over and over again because you are our surgeon for our heart our friend for our soul and we just thank you for being there for us and we just praise you for your unconditional love help us see that love this week and share that love with others as we go out of the service today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks guys for being here. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great week.